Now we are looking at the brain. It's interesting because the human brain uh, looks like this. It's got all these wrinkles on the surface. And when you are working with animal uh, intelligence, we have found that the more convoluted this wrinkliness is, generally the more intelligent uh, the animal is. However, uh, the brain has evolved entirely different in uh, the uh, ancestors of dinosaurs, uh, the descendants of dinosaurs. And so when you're looking at the brains of birds, um, their brains are entirely smooth, even though they have uh, equivalent uh, intelligence to some uh, mammals, like um, a crow uh, uh, may be as smart uh, maybe as smart as a chimpanzee, but I digress, as I often do. Um, now we are on page 86, and when we look at page 86, uh, we can see that some of the things we need to know are just surface features. What is this term cerebrum? The cerebrum is this whole part of the brain that we're looking at. It's like the outer part of the brain. The cerebrum is highly evolved in humans, and we attribute most of our uh, smartness uh, to the cerebrum. The cerebrum hemispheres, each hemisphere is half of a brain. You can see that there is this dividing line right down the center of the two cerebra, the two cerebrums, um, and it has a name that we will come around to in a second. Now, the surface features. You'll notice that there are ridges here. These are the ridges, the places where it is easy to touch. And each ridge is called a gyrus. Plural is called gyri. Okay? Probably pronounced gyri, but you know, gyri. Okay? Now, if I wanted to stick my fingers in there, stick my fingers down in the groove, those grooves, each one is called a sulcus, or plural is called sulci, or sulci, or sul. Key. Anyway, notice how this is covered with like, like a film, um, and that is one of the meninges, and for AP120, you really don't have to know about meninges, but I thought I would just explain that to you as long as we're here. All right, now, the lobes of the brain. This is what one of our lab models looks like, and remember that I also have got just... Um, just uh, videos on YouTube where I just go over the different lobes of the brain. Lobes of the brain. This is the frontal lobe. This is right here. The frontal lobe sits right under the frontalis muscle, which sits right under the, no. The frontal lobe sits right under the frontal bone, which sits right under the frontalis muscle. There you go, All right? So that's that. Here's the parietal lobe which sits right under the parietal bone. This is the occipital lobe, which sits right under the occipital bone. And this is the temporal lobe, which sits right under the temporal bone. Yay. What the heck is that? That is the cerebellum. Cerebellum, where are you on here? Oh, it is a uh, capital D. So we have cerebrum. All of this that we're looking at here is cerebrum. Uh, where's the diencephalon and the brainstem? They're, they're down deep. So we will see them when we take this and flip it over and look at it from the inside. And this is the cerebellum. And in my lecture part of the class, I told you that the cerebellum is responsible for the fine coordination of your movement. All right. Fishers and sul sulci. Sulci. Okay, so here we've got it colorized, frontal lobe, sorry, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, cerebellum, great. <clears throat> um, yeah, it, uh, the insula, we don't even talk about the insula. Let's talk about the sulcuses. You know, all of those sulcuses, the sulci, the sulci, okay, the grooves, each one of them has a name. That's crazy. Each gyrus has a name. Also a little bit crazy, but you don't have to know them all. The ones that you do have to know are right here. The longitudinal fissure, the lateral sulcus, 
and the transverse fissure. The lateral sulcus, wouldn't you like it to be that big groove on the side right there? And it is. That's the lateral sulcus. It's that big groove between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. By the way, I could ask it that way. What's the name of the groove between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe? It's the lateral sulcus. Okay. What is the longitudinal fissure? Do I have a, here's the longitudinal fissure. It is right between the two sides of the uh, cerebrums, right between the two cerebral hemispheres. I'd like you to notice that whenever it pauses, right there, do you see right there in the middle? I didn't get it right there in the middle. Let's see if it'll be right here in the, right, right here in the middle. What we're looking at is if you had a brain in front of you that you just, I don't know, we're making a Frankenstein or whatever, you could put your fingers down between the, right down here between there. You could put it down between there, but the brain doesn't fall in half. These outer parts, the cerebrums, they are actually separated, but you will get down to an area called the corpus callosum where if you wanted to split a brain in half, you'd actually have to cut it in half. All right, so we know the longitudinal fissure, the lateral sulcus. What is the transverse fissure? The transverse fissure is right here. It is between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. That's the transverse fissure. Okay. There's also a central sulcus that's very important, but not a part of AP120. Okay, let's talk about the corpus callosum. Now, here we're looking at a different model. Actually, let's go here. We're looking at the same model. So all of that is cerebrum, and all of that, if I... If I had a brain in front of me, I could have gone all that way. My fingers could have gone all the way down to there before they bump into something that resists me. And what they would bump into would be this, and it's called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is where the right side of your brain is attached to the left side of your brain. Um, and the corpus callosum can be divided um, in some people with really, really severe epilepsy. They'll do, a, it's called a split brain surgery. Um, the septum pellucidum. The septum pellucidum, it's really, really conceptual, okay? Follow me on this. This right here is kind of like a little window. There's like a little, let's say like a thick piece of saran wrap right there. And if I pop through it, on the other side, there is a space that holds fluid. Knowing about that space that holds fluid, that's something you'll bump into if you take 150 or 200. But this saran wrap that keeps the fluid in that side, that is called the septum pellucidum. Let's see, okay, the diencephalon. This whole area here, this whole area here is called the diencephalon and this whole area here is called the brain stem. This was the cerebrum. This is the cerebellum. Blue is the diencephalon. This part is the brain stem. Okay. <clears throat> so the diencephalon's got three parts that you should know. This thing that kind of looks like an eyeball, that is the thalamus. Right below the thalamus is the hypothalamus. And you studied the heck out of the hypothalamus, didn't you? Because it's important to the endocrine system. It does much more than just the endocrine system. The hypothalamus is responsible for taking in all kinds of information. And it's kind of a master controller for many parts of your body. This thing that kind of looks like a speed bag at a boxing gym, that is your pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland sits in a special part of the brain called what? Yeah, the cella turstica, that's where the pituitary gland sits, all right? The brainstem. The brainstem has got three main parts, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata 
looks a lot like the beginning of the spinal cord. If you're ever looking at a brain model like this, brain models generally do not have any spinal cord attached. So if we're pointing to something down here, we don't mean spinal cord, we mean medulla oblongata. I told you that there's fluid inside of the brain, right? And that fluid inside of there, there's a little space down in there. You don't need to know the name of it for AP120. There's more fluid right here on this side of the eyeball. There's a little space there. You don't need to know the name of that either. These things you do need to know. You need to know that this little area here, that little tube is called the cerebral aqueduct. And this little space right here, this space between the cerebellum and the uh, uh, brainstem is called the fourth ventricle. All right, we're almost there. Okay, let's see. Now we're looking at the brain stem. There's the brain stem, the brain stem in red. Okay. Now this is actually a real human brain. So let's review a couple of things. Here is still frontal lobe. Here is temporal lobe. Here is cerebellum. We're looking at the underside. You've taken that, that brain from the beginning and flipped it upside down. You're looking at the underside. And from the underside, all of this is brain stem. And this part that kind of might remind you of the um, spinal cord is not spinal cord, that's the medulla oblongata part of the brain stem. Here's the other part of the brain stem that's easy to see. It's more difficult to see that part of the midbrain. So I'm, I would not ask you to identify the midbrain from this view, personally. Let's see. However, you do need to know this, the olfactory bulbs. So the olfactory bulbs, I'm gonna do them in blue. Okay, see this little guy right here? See him? And there's his friend over on the other side. Those are olfactory bulbs. The olfactory bulbs sit where? They sit right on top of the cribriform plate. That's that part of the ethmoid bone, okay? Um, and everything that you smell is just, just way up inside of your nose. There are nerves there that allow you to smell and they send it directly to that part of your brain, the olfactory bulb. Now, where are your eyeballs? Okay, your eyeballs would be sitting right here. That's where your eyeballs would be sitting. And coming off the back of your eyeball is a nerve called the optic nerve. And the optic nerve attaches right there. This is a human brain. In order to get the brain out of the skull, we had to cut the optic nerve, but that is the optic nerve. The end of the optic nerve there has been cut. Let's put the eyeballs back. Okay, so that is the cut end of the optic nerve right there, right? Right there, cut end of the optic nerve. Now I'd like you to notice that right here, you see kind of like the letter X. And the letter X, I guess is, I don't know, chi or something like that in, uh, in Greek. And so this area where all of these neurons from the eyeball, some of them are crossing over like this, but others are coming in this way and going down the same side. That area is called the optic chiasm and um, leaving the optic chiasm right there, that is called the optic tract. Alrighty. The last video that we have is going to be a very quick one about reflexes.